Hey chemistry, this is Mrs. KJ and part two of the 1.06 pure substances versus mixtures. And I did have to change it a little bit because I realized that I only gave you how many molecules? I only gave you one. So therefore there's one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen. Just like when there's no number for a subscript, we assume it's a one. If there's not a number in front, we also assume it's a one. All right, so what about if I had 5CH4? Go ahead and hit pause and fill in all the answers. So in one molecule, there's one atom of carbon because there's no number there. There's four atoms of hydrogen because of the subscript. The five out front tells us there's five molecules or five copies of this chemical CH4. Therefore, if we distribute, five times one is five for the number of carbon atoms. Five times four is 20, so we have 20 hydrogen atoms. So just to kind of recap about compounds and elements. So elements um, are the simplest form of matter that has unique properties and is composed of only one kind of atom. And remember, you can find all the elements on the periodic table. A compound is when you chemically combine two or more elements in a fixed proportion, and that's what we talked about. It's H2O is water, not HO2, not H2O2, not OH. Nope, it has to be H2O. That's that fixed proportion. And those are our pure substances versus mixtures. So consider breaking water into its parts. If you use physical processes like the f -f -f phase changes are for physical like freezing, to separate it, you will end up with ice, which is still H2O water. Likewise, if you boil it, another physical change, you get water vapor, which is still H2O water. However, if you pass an electric current through water, you will get gases accumulating on each electrode. And no, by no means am I telling you to put water in electricity. There is a special safe way you have to set this up. But when you do, you can actually separate the water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now you have hydrogen and oxygen, those are both elements, so we chemically separated the compound. Here's another example of how you can do multiple physical and chemical separations. Let's say we had cinnamon and sugar mixed together. How could we separate it? Well, through a few steps. Separate out the cinnamon, dissolve the whole mixture in water, and filter it. So the cinnamon would stick to the filter paper, and now you'd have a solution of sugar and water that would go through the filter. Then you can get rid of the water by evaporating it, which would leave the sugar behind. Now you can actually burn sugar to make it into carbon and water vapor. The water that evaporated off is a compound and cannot be separated by physical means. But if we did that special electrochemical process, electrolysis, we could separate it into the two elements of hydrogen and oxygen. And once you have an element, you're done. That's it. And our other element here that we already had come off is carbon. So take some time to look over your periodic table I don't make you memorize them. If I had you in brick and mortar school, there's about 40 elements that I would make you memorize the abbreviations because otherwise chemistry doesn't mean anything. If you just read this as O, you won't learn it. You have to learn some of the basic ones. For example, the first 20 elements, you should learn their names and their abbreviations so you're familiar with them, as well as any ones that seem to pop up a lot. Like if I do a bunch of examples of silver because we use silver in a lab. Silver is AG. So when we get to that, make a point to learn those. All right, so here's the diagrams that we started with, and hopefully now they make more sense, and feel free to copy down which ones you feel will help you. Matter can be divided into mixtures and pure substances. Mixtures can be separated physically into the pure substances. Your pure substances, you have two choices. If it's only one kind of atom, it's an element on the periodic table. If there's more than one kind of element chemically combined, it's a compound. And of course, since it's chemically combined, we can chemically separate the elements in a compound into just the elements. So matter, separated physically. If you can separate it physically, yes, it's a mixture. If you can't, it's a pure substance. If we chemically separate it, yes, it's a compound. If you can't, no, it's an element. Make sure you do the worksheet. Um, and if you have questions on any of it, let me know before you take the quiz.